First of all, I'd like to give honor to God. He did so much for me every day. He's got me here. He's keeping me lifted up. And he's blessing me. And he can bless you too. Today, we have our bishop. He's bringing you a good word today. There's some good examples that's going to lift you up. Wait and just see. The topic today is don't let your collisions or distractions end your destiny. There's so much truth in that because God is in control. And if we trust God and look at God and keep our faith in God, sky's the limit. So sit back. It's coming from, chap it's coming from Mark chapter 5. Sit back and enjoy. Greetings, my brothers and sisters. We again want to thank God uh, for this privilege, the opportunity to share the gospel, the good word. We want to give honor to God and his son Jesus and the very power of the Holy Spirit. We greet you with the words of peace, and I know you would say peace be multiplied. We are so thankful to the Lord for his grace and his blessings. We're thankful that God is still faithful we're thankful that God is still able to do what we've asked him to do. So we are just honored today, uh, another blessed day today, a little rain, but this season. So we're thankful for that. Praise the Lord. We're thankful for, for that. We won't have to uh, uh, turn on my sprinklers. We'll save a little, a little money on that. So praise the Lord. We are honored today. We certainly want to honor the assistant pastor, Ella Billy Dowdy and his family. We thank God for his leadership. We want to honor our assistant pastor, Evangelist Gwen Dowdy Rogers. We're thankful to the Lord that uh, uh, during this election, her run for the school board, uh, that she's leading and doing well. So we thank God for that because we prayed for victory and it looks good. So we are thankful. We are thankful for the blessings there. We certainly honor our uh, production manager and influencer, Brother Charles Booker. Amen. We thank God for... Uh, our media president, Brother Deval Henry, we thank God for him. Uh, we thank God for our all-around player, my armor bearer, Deacon uh, Cornelius Beverly. We thank God for him, his dedication, and for the Church of the Living God, Temple 208, Highland, California, every one in leadership and every one in membership. We thank you. We thank you. We thank the community. We thank God for your support all throughout this ministry while we try to share this word of God. Yeah and make a change in your life. That's what it's all about, is to make a change, to let you know that you're favored when you find Jesus. Once you find Jesus, there's favor. I don't care what's going on. When you find Jesus, there's favor for you, and that's what we're presenting to you. And I'm asking that you test out the word of God. You test it out and find out whether or not we're telling you the truth or not. Praise the Lord. We thank you today. The Holy Spirit uh, has given me a topic to share with you today and that topic is don't let collisions or detours in your destiny Amen. don't let collisions or detours in your destiny don't let collisions or detours in your destiny our subtopic is favored not restricted favored not restricted and for our scripture lesson today it'll be found in the book of Mark and we'll start at about the fifth chapter and we'll begin with verse 22 mark the fifth chapter and start with probably verse uh, 22 and behold there came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. 25th verse, and 
a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. But the woman, fear and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. While he yet spoke, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troubles thou the master any further? Praise the Lord. We are so thankful to look and share this word with you. Don't let collisions or detours in your destiny. There are many things that are going to come in life and it could get you distracted, get you off. But what you have to realize is that your faith is in God and God has a plan for you. And we have to understand that in this life, we're going to bump into a few things, you know. But if we bump into a few things, it shouldn't just automatically change for us. We should stay on path. But I know it's kind of difficult sometimes because we can't see beyond that obstacle or that distraction, you know, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, you know, if, 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 if you get in an accident or a few weeks, you know, see, I don't know, a few weeks ago, you know, a rock hit one of my cars, uh, the, uh, the Acura, the MDX, and cracked the window, you know. I didn't, you know, I didn't like it, you know, the fact that it cracked the window, you know, I'm going to have to get the insurance, take care of it, which they did. But the thing is, when it cracked the window, I didn't just say, oh, gosh, the car got cracked window. I just leave it there. We just stop. Don't drive it no more. That's it. You don't stop when something, you know, when something happens, you know, we should realize that there are going to be some things that happen out of our control. But if God is the one we serve in, he'll get us through. He'll take care of some things for us. We have to remember what he's saying to us spiritually. That's why it's very important. John 15 and, 7, 15 and 7 says, If you abide in me, and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and shall be done unto you. That's the whole point, what we're trying to get. The word has to abide in you, in all circumstances. The word has to be deep in you. You know when you're eating food, you know, you, you, you sit there, but you got to digest your food, you know, that for, 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 the, for to get all the vitamins and nutrients and things like that. You got to digest it. The same thing with the word of God. You can hear the word of God. Satan will tell you real quick, you got it. You just heard the word, you know, you know. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Satan say, you got it. You ain't got it, though. You don't have it yet. You don't have it yet. That word got to resonate in you. You got to take time and meditate on the word. That's why God telling you now. You need to, you heard a word, you think you know the word, you didn't read it no more. The rest of the week, you didn't even take a look at it. This word has to abide in you. In other words, it has to reside deeply in you. This word, that's what he said. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will and shall be done unto you. Because you trust the word. The word has become alive in you. If the word become alive in you, you can trust it. Yeah. If it's not alive in then you don't trust it. It's like somebody telling you, you know, hey, you know, I believe you can climb that mountain. You don't believe you can climb the mountain. You ain't never climbed the mountain. You, 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 you can say all you want to. I believe you can get up there. You, ain't, you, can, you don't believe it. You ain't going to get up. You, know. you have to know that you can do it. So don't let collisions or detours... Get you off your destiny, you know. Don't stop. You, everyone has been, if you've been in college, or oh, I could take you to high school. You don't quit, you know, you, you, get in a one, you get in a class and you say, whoa, this class here, you know, I, you know, look like I ain't doing too good, you know, in this class. Boy, I planned on graduating from high school, but this class gonna eliminate me, you know. Or you get in college, you say, oh man, I thought I was gonna make college, but this statistic class seemed like it gonna knock me out. You don't quit. But a lot of people have quit. They've quit college because one class, you know, one teacher. You know. No, God said, hey, if God is for you, he more than the world against you. Amen. 
So, so, you, so, so for the Christian, you know, for the Christian, we got God. God will bring us through, you know. He'll, he'll, he'll do, for I know the thoughts, what is it, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. The expected outcome, you know. He didn't say you weren't going to have some challenges in between. But your expected outcome, you can count on God getting you there, boy. You know, I can count on it. Four years, you know, if, if I stay four years in college, I can count on make it. But if the first year, you know, I drop, I'm not going to make it, you know. So you have to trust God, you know. You know, some people mess, some, some people, you know, in an interview, you know, they do the interview and everything and then they get the job. They say, no use going. You know, I, I last interview, you know, I didn't make it, so I ain't going to make it. Oh, man, no, 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 no. It don't matter if, the, if someone on the board that don't like you. If God is for you, you don't have to worry about it. God, God will bring favor. He'll get you a majority vote. Deuteronomy 8 and 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that gives thee power to get wealth. This is what he said, that, that he may establish his covenant which he swore unto thy fathers as it is this day. God's word I'm counting on. You, know. you worry about your finance? God's the one. He don't want to take care of you. He's your source. We trust, we depending on God. You know, the COVID, remember? I'm depending on God. You know, I ain't depending on, I ain't depending on scientists and all that. I'm depending on God. I said, God, I need favor, you know. In your word, God, you know, I need you, I need you to protect my body, you know, that I don't, that, that I don't get it, you know. And that's what we, that's what we're praying that God, God will get us through. Let God do it, you know. And we should be praising and thanking God. I have to thank God first, you know. And let the manifestation come later. Trust God. God will get you there. He'll do some things for you. Now, there are going to be some hurdles. There are going to be some challenges. There are going to be some things that if you don't, if you don't stay firm, you're going to get off track. You're going to lose some time. You're going to mess up, you know. You know. You may lose favor with somebody. You may react too fast, you know. You're on a job, you get promoted and everything, and you got some people you're working for and everything, and then, then you hear, you know, hear from, you know, from the break room, they say, you know, I don't like this, I don't like, I don't think he's very good. He ain't a good supervisor, he don't know what he's doing. Yes, and you can't, and then you go in and you say, come in here, you, who, who said all of that about me, right. you know. And then the next thing you know, management said, I don't think he can manage too good. Because right. he, the first little thing, he doesn't flew out the handle. You know, God's supposed to keep us stable, be all right, you know. <clears throat> you know, I looked in the book, I looked in the book of Genesis, the 12th chapter. I took a look at it, you know, because I, I, I saw some things here that God had promised. And, then, and, and, and I, saw, I saw something now uh, in, in, in about the 12th chapter, okay. verse 1, it says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of the country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Yeah. And, and he said, and, third, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. I'm going to do something for you, Abraham, that you can't do for yourself. So Abram departed. He did it. Yeah. As the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was 75 years old when he departed out of Haram. And Abram took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haram. So he, lit, he went out, did everything God told him, going out, because I'm going to do something, I'm going to bless you. You know, but he, he couldn't see nothing. You know, he, it, it's like, you know, it's like a, a few weeks ago, we had a blackout. He had lights went out and everything. We couldn't see nothing. I said the same thing, you know, before. I'm going to get a generator. Too late then, I'm in it, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to write. I'm trying to do something, everything out. I got little small lights, you know, little, little old, you know, things that I can test in, but everything out. And so, so I'm, I'm a little frustrated on it. And my wife, she said, don't open the refrigerator. And I said, what? And I said, what, what are you talking about? They, you know, that cold air coming out. I said, the refrigerator better hold up for that short period of time. But it was, but it, but it was out. And I said, man, I should have got the generator. Oh, 
But I ain't expect you're not gonna there gonna be some things that gonna come on you that you don't like. But I got but I didn't have to, you know, go up and say, Edison, you know, what's the world going? Now I did call them just to find out, make sure, you know, you know, make sure I didn't mess up, miss a bill or something, you know. And they said, no, we're gonna be out a while. Now, you know, I didn't go berserk, you know, I didn't say, hey, I'm the bishop, I want them lights on now. You know. Now I saw now I know a few leaders of mine, they called me and they told me that he did call them and tell them. <laughs> so, but the thing is, God said, told Abraham, get on out there. He didn't say nothing, go on out. And, 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 and Abraham went and, 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 and checked the land out. He on his way, everything going good. He praying, putting the altar out and everything. And the Bible said in the 10th verse, and there was a famine in the land. And Abram went down into Egypt to sojourney there for the famine was grievous in the land. It, it got bad, so he went into Egypt. Yeah, that's what he did. He went down, he said, oh man, we, we, you know, I got all this cattle. We're going we to have to find a place. You know, we got to find a, you know, that, that wasn't his plan, you know, but he followed God. And so when he get there, sometimes, you know, when a detour or a collision come, you know, that's when it can throw you off. And so Abram, Abram, the man of faith, because he done stepped out and left his household, you know, and everything. But, 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 but after that famine came, he went to Egypt and his mind started playing tricks on him. Because in, th- in the 12th verse, it says, therefore, it shall come to pass. When the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, this is his wife and they will kill me, but they will save thee. Did he begin to thinking about, wait a minute, Sarah? Sarah, you pretty. She's 65, man, but she's pretty. He told her, man. He said, hey, he said, I'm going to, I got, he's thinking for God now. See, this is what I'm telling you. When you get in a collision, I don't care how powerful you are, you can get your mind kind of twisted. So at, the, so at this point, now he, done, he said, Sarah, I got to talk to you, honey. So he said, Sarah, uh, Sarah, he's Sarah now, you know. And he said, uh, these Egyptians, they're going to see your beauty and they're going to want you. And they're going to know that, you know, we married and they're going to kill me and take you. And he said, so uh, I tell you what we do. Now, he didn't pray to God. And I'm telling you, don't be thinking, oh, God bless me. Oh, man, he got me through to college. He got me that job and my finance rolling in good. I've been paying my tithes. Ain't nothing going to happen. You better pay attention to the word of God. Greetings, my brothers and sisters. I'd like to share a spiritual nugget with you. God has a destiny for you. But there are many curves and turns. Abraham's path had many curves and turns and he feared for his life because of the beauty of Sarah, his wife. Jairus' daughter was near death and he asked Jesus to come and heal her. Jesus was delayed because he was healing someone else. The word came that the daughter had died. All hope seemed to be lost. But Jairus had faith in Jesus. And so they continued on. And Jesus came and healed his daughter, raised her from the dead. My brothers have faith in Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, We walk by faith and not by sight. God bless you. You know, because Abraham right here is a strong man. He went on out. I don't even know half of us going to leave the household and take everything and not know where we're going. So I ain't going to even jump there. I ain't going to bother with that. But the point is, he, didn't told, he said, listen, he said, they're going to take you. Oh, boy, that's, just a, that's why the word got to be in deep. The word should have came up and said, Abe, hold, talk to us. You know, Abraham didn't say nothing. He told Sarah, this is what I want you to do. You tell them that you're my sister, you know. And, you know, and uh, that way. Now, he don't know what he's saying because he's going to get the, that's the mother. That she's going to be the mother of those that going to be blessed to carry on. Yeah. But he told, she said, she, she said, okay, you know, no problem. And, and, and the word of God says that when they, when they saw her, the princess and everything, when they saw her, they said, Ooh, man, they said, ooh, man, they did. They, talk, they started praising and they, I mean, they felt good. They, they felt, hey. I mean, and so they, they t- t- we got to inter- we got to introduce you to Pharaoh. Now, now he all messed up, and they t- they like they happy with him though, 
Because then when Pharaoh saw her, he said, oh, man. Woo, man. Woo, boy. She was looking good, man. And we might as well say she was looking good. Because he said, hey, Abraham, go, you know, look, this is, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you camels, you know, you know, I'm going to give you oxen. I'm going to give you all kind of things. And, uh, and I'm going to give you some man servants. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you everything, you see. Boy, he felt good because he said, I'm, you know, I'm going to bring her in. They introduced the mother into a harem. Cow. Because Abraham done made, made a mistake in there. Now she, oh boy, God, yeah, see, God has, man, God, some, sometimes God got his purpose divine in you. He got to get in there and straighten things out quick. Because just about to mess up everything. Just because he, he lied. Oh boy. That's a faithful man I'm talking to you about. So don't, don't, don't be jumping up like you somebody. But anyway, and so after Pharaoh got her in there, and that harem man, he said, Woo, man. He said, Come on in here. You what you call you? Sarai? Okay. Woo, boy. I'm going to at you. I'm going to at you. I'm going to put you in. And man, boy, the word of God said plagues hit his house badly. Plague hit him quick, man. Man, so much to, I don't know, had he even been following, had Pharaoh even been following God. And guess what? Man, he knew, he knew that God was hitting him. He knew that right away. He said, this ain't right. Something going on. And, 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 he, and he got the truth because he came back. He said, hey, why did you, why did you, put, why did, why did you cause this trouble on me? You knew this was your wife. He said, now here, you take her, and he gave her, he still gave all the shape, man, he gave all that stuff to him. And, but, but the Bible said, man, he was so mad, he, to, he, he had escorts, the escort, the man of God, out of Egypt. That's what happens when we get out of line. Now, Abraham, the thing about it is, yeah, he, he saved the skin, but he went out embarrassed. He went out embarrassed because he's a man of God and he shouldn't have, it shouldn't have been no embarrassment in that situation. He shouldn't have went out like that. If I go into your house, you shouldn't kick me out. It shouldn't be that kind of reputation. We got a reputation to share God's word. All he had to do, I'm telling you, a collision came, the detour came, and he went the wrong way. He needed to stay and trust God. That's what you have to do. Stay it's the confusion that'll mess you up. That's what'll get you off track. If you don't let God, you got to keep God there. Every step of the way, God got to be involved in it. You can't, you can't go in your own mind. Your mind going to mess up on it. Whew. Jairus and the scripture lesson. Jairus came whew, to Jesus. Yes, he did. He came because he came strong to. He said, Jesus, my daughter is near death. I need you to come and lay hands on her. Oh, boy. And heal her. Whew, man. And you know what Jesus said? Let's go. Boy, man. Whew. And so Jairus, he sat, man. He's feeling good. He wants his daughter. And he, you know, he, 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 he on his way and he says, oh, man. He said, oh, man, Jesus, I got Jesus. I got the man of God. I got the anointed man of God going with me. And he's going to do the healing. You know, when, good, when, you, when Jesus is in you and you, you've been praying and you know it, and you feel good. And he was going, and boy, they were doing fine. And all of a sudden, here come a woman with an issue of blood. She come in, and she done touched Jesus. And Jesus felt it, you know, and said, wow, something, something, I felt something go out of me. And, and the disciples, Peter, James, and John were there. They were saying, who? I said, no, man, there's a lot of people here and everything like that. And he said, yeah, but I, know, you know, I feel something. I know something happened. And so, so time going on, and pretty soon the woman had to admit, she said, I did it. I did it. And then she told everything. In other words, she's talking a long time. Yeah. She's causing a lot of time. Yeah. You know, sometimes how we get impatient and say, come on, get, get on with it. Finish it, finish it up, man. Come on, finish it up. And we get off track, you know, like, just like that. But shoot, man, she talking, telling Jesus, oh, God, and everything like that. And Jairus got to be a man of God. Because pretty soon, Jairus, you know, he could kind of say, this girl, my daughter, man, you know, my daughter. Yeah, this is good. And then after all of that long dialogue, when somebody said he was going to go 15 minutes or went, you know, an hour or something, after all that long dialogue, then here comes the soul just saying, 
No need for Jesus to come. Oh, man, you don't understand. She died. She dead. No need, no need for you to come, Jesus. You just don't, don't just make your detour now. There's been a collision. You waited too long, and she dead. Man, that's how we feel sometimes. Too late. Didn't come when we wanted it to come, you know. Goodness gracious, I thought God was going to come through. It ain't look like it's going to come through for me. I better, maybe I better do something myself. Jesus said, let's go. Jesus kept, kept on. He said, sh sh let's go, Jairus. We're going, man. And when he got there, boy, that's what always happened. You know you're a child of God. He got there, they were cut. Man, they was yelling and crying out loud and everything. And Jesus said, what is all of this noise? What's going on here? And he said, he said, don't worry. She's, she's just asleep. Man, they went to laughing like they'll laugh at you, man. You'll say, God will heal me. They'll laugh at you. Say, I'm, you say, I put this tidy in, God going to bless me. They're going to laugh, man. They laughed at Jesus. That, that's enough. You know, if they laugh at you, you quit. You say, I don't, want, I don't think I'm going to do it. Forget it. No, -uh, Jesus stayed right with it. That's why my faith and trust is in Jesus. Because he stayed with it. He said, guess what he did? He said, Peter, James, and John, first of all, he, he, those were the only ones he let come with him. So he took them. He said, the rest of them, he, he kicked them out. He didn't need them. He took, he took Jairus in and the mother. He went on in there, boy. He went in a room, man. He saw, he saw the girl laying there like that, boy. She was, both, she was dead. He said, Talithia Kumai. In other words, Danzel. Get up. Come on out. Ah, dog. Man, shoot. That 12-year-old girl, guess what happened? She got up and was healed. He stayed straight, you know. He stayed right with it. Collisions are going to come. Detours are going to come. Distractions are going to come. God going to give you a message. And then you're going to move and you ain't going to see nothing. Don't worry about seeing. Seeing ain't no good anyway. The faith, to stand on the faith. If God said it to me, he'll bring it out. God can bring it out. If God bring it out, don't worry about it. I don't care how dark it gets. I don't care if the lights go off. God will do it for you. Praise God. Shoot, man. Shoot. I'm ready to God. My brothers and sisters, yes. don't let circumstances stop you. God got you. He'll take you through. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater work than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. We got, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can make some change. We can do some things. You can do some things. You are created for a purpose. Everything you need has been hidden inside of you. The skirmishes, detours, and God's calls must not hinder you. Keep moving on. The blessings will follow. Believe that you can because your faith is in him. Your faith must stand. My brothers and sisters, if you don't know the Lord, Romans 10 and 9 says that if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Get it done now. You need to get your life in order now. In the near future, we'll be putting up our message, our Gmail. We'll be putting up different things for you to reach us. You, some of many of you are trying to reach out now, and we want to make sure that we get your prayers taken care of and expose you to some other things that will help you grow. God wants you blessed. God bless you. Love you. Be blessed. First of all, I want to thank the bishop. He brought so much, so much in these stories, how faith in God can get you through anything. And there's examples in the word of truth, in the Bible. Bishop brought it. There is so much, it's, it's, it's really too much for me to talk about. There is so much there. I hope you saw, I know I'm gonna repeat seeing it over and over again because there's so much was in that message. So, feel free to send it to your friends and your family, because it could help them. You could be a blessing to them by just showing them the video, giving them the link, because there's so much truth there. God is real. It showed it in the Bible. So, I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. See you next time. God bless.